The farce surrounding the blocking of Jamie Driscoll from standing as North East Mayor continues. Jamie, as you'll know, if you watched our last two shows, is the current mayor of North of Tyne. But after he appeared at an event with Ken Loach, he was excluded from the North East Mayor long list. Shadow Trade Secretary Nick Thomas-Simmons is the latest to go out to bat for the decision. The process uh, is ongoing. I, I think oh. that that is the, the position. I don't see, uh, there's no, that I'm aware of anyway, a, appeal mechanism here. I think the decision has been made and I wish the candidates who are going forward well. What do you say when Jamie Driscoll warns that uh, it will damage the party's reputation? Well, I don't think having a really robust and stringent due diligence process damages our reputation. In fact, the opposite. I think that the process that we are now operating under Keir Starmer, it's a, a different, tougher process. The opposite is producing a set of excellent candidates. I was lucky enough to be out with many of them during the local elections. They are a really but, talented group that will make a great contribution. Uh, right. Uh, do you think he's been successful in his current job? Uh, I think that as North uh, East Tyne Mayor, we've heard about the mm. achievements Jamie's put forward, but just holding one office in the Labour Party does not entitle you automatically even if to you're, be considered Even if you're quite good, although, you know, they think themselves to be listen, successful. Listen, I, I've, I've taken part in many selections mm. over uh, the years. There are always different considerations. And just because you have one person, it could be a councillor, could be a mayor, could be any other uh, position, it doesn't automatically entail anyone to be on the long list for something else. Well, Jamie, what do you say to that? Well, we can hear Nick tripping over his tongue there with various weasel words. The reality is there's a pattern of shutting out candidates who oppose, you know what, they want me out because I support the policies that Keir Starmer was elected on as leader of the Labour Party. And that's what it comes down to. All right. Members should decide. Good line. They want me out because I support the policies Keir Starmer himself promised in his leadership campaign, a bunch of promises he then broke. Earlier in the day, Lisa Nandy made a similar argument to Thomas Simmons. She's speaking here to Nick Robinson on Radio 4. Why is the Labour Party not prepared to let one of its own, an existing mayor, a man called J.B. Driscoll, even be on the long list for selection to be a mayor in the wider region? Well, we have a process through which we decide who is able to go forward as Labour candidates onto a long list and a short list. The party has decided that, that certain individuals are not able to do so. But he, he, I he's have good no... enough to represent the people of North Tyne in the name of the Labour Party, but he's not good enough for Labour members to even have the chance to say whether they want him to be mayor of the entire region. Sounds like a, a fix, doesn't it, by the leadership? Well, I, I have no part in this process, and it's right that I don't. We were investigated by the Equality and Human Rights Commission under our previous leadership, and they found that one of the great problems that had developed in the Labour Party was that friends and factions of the leadership were able to influence decisions about disciplinary matters. Well, somebody, it's right is, that, somebody is blocking him, aren't they? Well, it's, but it's absolutely right that I and others don't get involved in decisions about who is okay. or isn't fit to stand as a Labour candidate. What I will say to you, though, Nick, is that I make absolutely no apology for saying that we've tightened up our processes and we hold all all of our candidates to the highest standards, which has not always been the case in the past. If you want to represent the Labour Party, you have to meet a certain set of standards, and that is right and proper. Given Lisa Nandy's claim there that Starmer has nothing to do with selections, it was perhaps unfortunate timing that the Financial Times released this long read on the same morning she was speaking. Keir Starmer's ruthless remaking of the Labour Party. And they say the opposition leader has consolidated control by taking over party machinery and sidelining the left as he bids for power, doesn't sound particularly independent to me, and it includes this passage. In the run-up to the next general election, Starmer's allies have produced a list of unideological or centrist candidates to run for Parliament, purging those suspected of holding radical left views as they seek to combine the hard left to what Mandelson once called a, quote, sealed tomb. So, of course, Lisa Nandy, all of these people have been sent out onto the television to say it's just about quality, it's just about competence, nothing to do with politics. And then you've got all of these sources telling the Financial Times that, of course, it's about politics, which, I mean, everyone can see, right? The BBC angle of this story is also an interesting one. We have an update on it. So on yesterday's show, we played this clip of Victoria Derbyshire grilling Jamie Driscoll on Newsnight. No one's entitled to this candidature. And if there are better candidates, then those are the ones that the members in the North East will select 
to do this job. You know, if I was offered an opportunity to stand on a platform with Ken Loach, I wouldn't chat to him about movies. I would challenge him on some of the odious and repulsive things he has said. Did you do that, Jamie Driscoll? Over the last 25 years. Did I talk to, yeah, I was talking to Ken Loach about film. You no, 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 no. Talk. Did you challenge him um, on some of his you, views? No, again, I reject the premise of this. You don't turn up to a cultural event and then start talking about something you weren't invited to talk about. Why not? I why not? Why didn't you challenge Ken Loach? Well, as we showed you um, on, on yesterday's show, the BBC themselves don't seem to think it's appropriate or relevant to challenge Ken Loach on whatever it is we're supposed to be upset about him with, um, because we showed you the first part of a BBC North East segment on Ken Loach in can, as I say, released the same day as that Newsnight interview. And the BBC journalist didn't challenge the director. In fact, it was an incredibly positive segment from start to finish, talking about how accomplished he was and how he was putting the northeast of England on the map through his films. Well, they've now released part two. It's all very familiar territory for Ken Loach and his filmmaking comrades, producer Rebecca O'Brien and screenwriter Paul Laverty. After all, this is the 15th film he's shown at Cannes, more than any other director in the festival's history. And with that, the spectacle of the red carpet's over and it's now time to share their film with the world. What a response. A 15-minute standing ovation from more than 2,000 people. You never know how it's going to play, and there's something quite spectacular, you know, kind of sensing an, an audience in, su in such, a, a, such a beautiful place. It was, I think the, there were quite emotional feelings in the room. Couldn't have been better, really, to be honest. I can't believe the crowds at Cannes gave him a 15-minute standing ovation without challenging him. James, is Can full of a bunch of anti-Semites who should be nowhere near any kind of political party ever? Or indeed the, the, the BBC doing, doing a feature on Ken Loach, or I've seen him interviewed on you know, BBC uh, North East. The, the situation here is, is pretty farcical in terms of what the party is trying to claim and about the standards that are supposedly being set. And actually, look, I'm, I'm personally I'm a, a big fan of, of Jamie Driscoll. I think people should be uh, big fans of Jamie Driscoll. I think he's done a, a really exceptional job with the actually pretty limited resources that some of these metro mayors have and made things happen that any, you'd have thought, Labour supporter, Labour MP, Labour politician would say, this is all good and these are things that you know, metro mayors in different parts of the country uh, should be doing. And you can see the respect he's won uh, from across the political spectrum. I mean, it's quite, OK, look, there's a bunch of Tories who have their own reasons for intervening in this, shall we say. But nonetheless, Nadine Sahawi, Simon Clark, both popping up to say, you know, this is someone that we've worked with and we, that we respect. This is hardly, you know, into this world of, what, some swivel-eyed momentum monster or whatever, you know, sort of illusory thing that some people want to conjure up, this monster in the northeast. It's not true at all. He's a good, effective mayor that... Labour Party members in the North East should be allowed to vote for to be their, their candidate. And the, the way he's been sort of excluded from this, I think, is particularly uh, farcical. The idea that you have a robust process that also doesn't have any right of appeal when it looks like something has gone wrong, and here it looks like something has gone wrong, this isn't a robust process. You need to have uh, the appeals built in there. It, the whole thing, you know, really stinks, exactly as you said, of something that looks horribly like a stitch-up. And of course, the Financial Times uh, yesterday making some of this uh, rather clear about what was going on. One other just little thing in that, the idea that you're going to be an unideological politician, I'm sorry, I mean, is, is there any more ideological claim than this centrist thing of saying that everybody else has an ideology, I float serenely above it, I care only about the facts. It's absolute nonsense. The idea that you have an, a non-ideological politician, I'm sorry, is just almost embarrassing in terms of how somebody might try and think about politics in this way. And of course, it's an intensely ideological claim to make about the world.